to The Soulish Podcast. My name is Whitney Apke, and I am your host. I'm so excited that you are here to listen to my new podcast series, Soulish. Here, I'll be talking all about the ish of our souls. The ish being negative thought patterns, blockages, challenges, but also the victories, aha moments, and breakthroughs we experience in our mind, emotions, and will. We'll dive deep and talk about everything in between, of course. I'm excited to share my experiences and thoughts as well as bring on guests who can help us make the connections between our spirit, soul, and body. It's my desire to uplift, encourage, and inspire you in each podcast. Welcome to episode six of the Soulish Podcast. I am very much looking forward to having this conversation with you guys. As I shared with you last week, I've been going through kind of a life change, and it's not easy when you go through something that you didn't expect, or that is super painful, or (laughs) that um, you know you have to let go of things and change direction, and especially when things are unknown that's even more difficult. And for me, I really struggle with like a fear of the future, a fear of the unknown of what I don't know. And I often put in the, whatever that gap is of the unknown, I like to put something in it because I don't like that lingering limbo, I don't know what's going to happen stage of either moving on in life or changing direction. I mean, most people don't like change. I'm pretty cool with change if I can see ahead, if I can see what the destination is, if it's like set in stone or confirmed, (laughs) then I'm okay. But if there's no confirmation or if there's no surety at all, I really feel very unstable. And I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate. So I really wanted to talk to you about negative self-reflection, negative thought patterns, and what to do. Even today, before this podcast recording, I, man, I got hit with it. I was on my way back from running an errand, and all of a sudden, all these feelings started flooding my heart and flooding my mind, and I just was so overwhelmed, and I started crying in the car, not hysterically, but just I got overwhelmed, and so I was like, you know what? I'm not going to fight it. Normally, I fight tears. I don't like crying. It's not cute, but I especially just, I, I have a fear of also letting the emotions out. When you're dealing with something that is super heavy and difficult, sometimes it's even hard, you know, to let yourself feel it because it hurts so bad. And also because I'm just not sure if I can pick myself off the floor after like just letting it all out. It's kind of that thing of like, well, gosh, I feel like I need to manage this. It's really not easy. And So I immediately started talking to myself like I would if I was my best friend. And if I was sitting in the passenger seat of the car while I was telling myself all of what I was thinking and feeling. And so I started talking to myself, it's okay. It's all right to feel that. It's okay to think those thoughts because you know that that's not true. This is true. This is what you know in your gut is the truth within you. You know who you are. You know what you're passionate about. You know where you want to be in life. And you had to make this change. It was a necessary change, super painful change, but you had to make this change. And I'm sure you guys have experienced this before. I think most people do. But it's the conversation that we have with ourselves that is the most important conversation. It's not the conversation you have with your friends as you're going through this change in your life or your family. It's the conversation you have with yourself that is defining. You don't define yourself at any other point than when you have the conversation with yourself. And if you can have that conversation with yourself and say, I accept you, you're going to be okay. I love you for who you are. You are so valuable. You matter. 
you know, those kind of things, when you affirm yourself of what you already know, you're just having a moment of self-doubt or you're just feeling the hurt of like, and, and also the thoughts of like, did I, did I fuck up? Did I make a mistake? Did I just make the biggest mistake of my life? Not just a mistake, but the mistake. And so you can have all of those feelings and, and really be struggling. But the thing that you need to remember is that as long as you are grounded and, and you may have to reground yourself and just because you have to reground yourself doesn't mean that you're not grounded. It just means that you're having all of these things spring up from your core, right? From who you are and everything that's happening within you. And it's bringing up maybe even a lot of things from your shadow, a lot of things that you've stuffed down before and you never addressed. And you can make whatever this change is in your life a catalyst to literally, in a sense, catapult you into your future and you can have your future be your present if you do the work right and if you acknowledge yourself and accept yourself forgive yourself because that's my big thing to be honest I suck at self-forgiveness I am my hardest critic and I do not forgive myself easily and so for me in this change that's maybe been Part of it is that I have been struggling with forgiving myself for letting something go longer than maybe it should have, but it's like, gosh, but I was so present and I I lived consciously, I consciously was in this and invested in all of that. And so I don't feel bad for being invested, but in hindsight, I wish that I would have listened to any of those doubts or disappointment and and being continually disappointed and because then if I hadn't stuffed that down then I maybe would have made the decision a long time ago but because I was so invested and you put so much effort into the things that matter in your life it's hard to give up and I'm not a I'm not a quick quitter you know I do not quit quickly <laughs> and so I deal a lot with self-forgiveness and I really have to say it out loud. I forgive you. It's okay. This is how you learn because next time you won't do the same mistake because this is so painful, you'll remember. And so it's good to self-reflect and it's good to go inward and it's good to manage your emotions, but don't manage them to an extent that you don't feel them. Allow yourself to cry. Allow yourself to feel it. And it's okay to even feel anger, sadness, disappointment. Where it can go south or where it can become harmful or problematic is when it is obsessive, negative, excessive, and repetitive. So when negative self-reflection starts happening, a lot of times we can start obsessing over it, right? And negative self-reflection, like sometimes you self-reflect and it's not that you're being critical, but you notice something about yourself that you're like, "Mm, I really want to change that about myself or I really want to work on that. That's positive. That's healthy. That's okay. That actually benefits you. But when you become self-critical, right, then your self-reflection becomes critical, becomes negative. And a lot of times we can start to repeat those thoughts. And because we're in the middle of something that maybe is not so hunky-dory and daisies and roses and happy-go-lucky, right? Because sometimes change or like adjustments in life are not happy. They, They are very difficult. There's a lot of emotion involved. And we can freak out about every step that we take, every choice we make, everything we say to everybody, and we can become very obsessive. And that obsessive self-reflection that is negative, that repeats in your mind constantly, that is that overrules your mind and it basically takes over, that's actually called rumination. And rumination is a kind of negative thinking in which we get mentally literally stuck and we keep spinning 
in that, you know, negative self-reflection like loop. And it's scary because when you think and you obsess about something like that, not only can you get depressed and for some people even suicidal. I know for me, that bridge between depression and suicidal is very short. I go straight to, I offer no value, so therefore I should not exist in this world. And so for me, I really have to work on that. And I have to manage that. As I said before, I have to really know, hey, this is a weakness in me when I get really sad and depressed. I can very quickly go over to that side of that bridge and then struggle with a whole nother bag of issues and negative self-reflection, doubt, uh, devaluing myself, you know, not knowing my worth. I basically toss my worth out of the window Uh, so to speak. And then I start really dealing with a whole lot more. So rumination is basically kind of like when you start spinning your wheels and you're not going anywhere and it literally locks you up. So you're not moving forward and you may not even be moving backwards in your mind or in your life or in your choices, but you're literally stuck and you cannot think about anything else. That's all you think about. That's all you talk about. And that becomes a real problem. That's when it's very harmful to you. That's when it's very toxic. Hey, it's me. I just wanted to let you guys know that I am a certified life coach and I have been coaching and mentoring people for over a decade now. I specialize with issues of the soul. No surprise there and can help you realign with your values and purpose, break free from emotional blockages and negative thought patterns, and you will feel motivated and encouraged to take the necessary steps to living a fulfilling life. My clients are people just like you who want to have connected and positive relationships with their friends, family, and significant others, break free from addictions and bad habits, heal emotional issues and trauma, and experience spiritual breakthrough and energetic healing. Because as we go through life, we encounter challenges and hardships, and sometimes we need someone to help us keep going or to make adjustments that enable us to overcome and grow, and most of all, enjoy our life. My sessions are designed so that you are completely free to address whatever you feel is most important. If you are interested in meeting with me one-on-one, then go to WhitneyApke.com forward slash coaching and sign up. Your first session is on me. So for like example, if you're feeling lonely, the, the thought there, you're feeling lonely. Why? Because you maybe live alone. You may not have a pet, you know, that can help you with that whole loneliness factor. And so you may think about being lonely forever. And then it might go to, well, I'm never going to meet anybody. I'm never going to meet the right person. And then it will go to, well, I'm never having kids. If I can't find the right person, then I can't have a family of my own. And then it goes to, well, gosh, what if I even lose my friends? What if they go off and, you know, do their own thing and move elsewhere? And then then I'm really going to be alone. And then you really start to feel lonely. (laughs) So that's a good example of how you can obsess over this feeling, right? Which might be a present reality in your life. It might be the case. You are alone. But loneliness is a state of mind, not necessarily a state of being. And I think when we realize that, That's like the humdinger that gets you out of that negative thought pattern, that negative self-reflection, and then you're not going down this path of, I'll be alone forever, I'll never meet the right person, I'll never have kids or my own family, and gosh, I won't even have friends in the end, and then I'll be alone forever, and I'll die alone, right? You stop yourself at that because you realize, I'm alone, yeah, I don't live with anybody right now. But I'm not lonely because you know what you're worth. You know what your future holds because you visualize it. You meditate on it. You're focused on it, not obsessively, but you're focused on it because you want to be able to recognize the real thing when it comes into your path. And how can you recognize the real thing if you haven't done the work, right? And whatever that is, whether that's a person, a career, 
could be traveling the world. It could be, it could be anything, right? That you're really wanting. It's something that you're dreaming of, that you're hoping for. And it could be anything in your life. If you aren't doing the work and you aren't saying, hey, this universe, source, this is what I want. This is what I'm passionate about. This is what I want to see happen in my life. Then you're never going to be able to recognize it if you're not doing that work. So it's really important to do that work because not only does that help you actually bring in the future into your present reality, but then it also helps you when you get hung up on these thoughts, these negative self-reflections, these negative thought patterns, because you don't allow it because it doesn't have a place in you to hook on to, right? I always think of it like a fish hook. And if I don't open my mouth, <laughs> then a hook can't get caught, right? If I just keep swimming, then I'm fine. I don't want anything in me. I don't want there to be fear. I don't even want anxiety. I don't want self-doubt. I don't want anything in me to be able to be an anchor for something that could actually get me stuck in the very thing that I don't want to get stuck in, that I actually want to heal and move forward from. And so that's why we have to do that work, right? So you may focus on how bad you feel in a moment and why you feel so bad and what you did so wrong to get you in that situation I'm right there with you, been there, done that, even this week. You could even think about how things could get worse and how you could mess things up even more or how much better things would be if you hadn't done this. But thinking that way doesn't get you anywhere. Focusing on the bad, focusing on the negative doesn't help you. It's not productive. It doesn't help you heal. Feeling things and letting the thoughts come up that come up, but letting them waft out or speaking to them, addressing them, that's all good. And that's like what I did today. I didn't push away the thoughts and I wanted to. I actually fought them off at the beginning because I was afraid, gosh, is this going to be like the tidal wave that just takes me over and then I can't even finish my day of work, right? Because sometimes it can feel like that, right? When something's so big and has a lot of emotion and a lot of thoughts and elements to it because these are things that actually maybe are in relation to the current present situation that I'm in, but actually it goes much deeper. These are things that I have felt for many years, right? And when you can recognize that and acknowledge that like, oh, okay, all right, these are things that I've actually had in me for quite some time. And these are just being brought up, right? This moment in my life is a catalyst. It's allowing me to work on myself, to allow things from my shadow to come to surface, to come to the light. And that's all this is. And yes, it's backed by a lot of emotion, but I can speak to that. I have all authority and a place in my own life to speak to myself, if you don't think that you have the right to speak to yourself and to realign, reaffirm, acknowledge, accept, and, and forgive yourself, then you really need to go inward and you need to address and see why do I not feel worthy of even myself picking myself up off the floor? Then there's something of, of not feeling worthy of even fighting your own battles. That's a very low, low place to be. I've been there for sure where I've just been like, I don't even have anything to say to myself because I'm believing everything that's coming to the surface right now that's negative, that is degrading, that is victim mentality, and all of that is very difficult. It's very difficult to sometimes differentiate between you being a victim of, of life and a victim of other people and you actually just wallowing in self-pity. And that's really difficult sometimes to recognize in the moment, but I think there's always an opportunity. And life gives us, like I said last week, life gives us all of those opportunities to rise up, to acknowledge, to recognize, to forgive, to move forward, to move on. And that's the beauty of life. So I want to talk about, if we're going through all of this, I've kind of talked a little bit about how 
I overcome that moment or situation. But I just want to go through those things again because I think it's really important to talk about. First of all, recognize when your thinking starts to get repetitive or negative or negatively repetitive. (laughs) You got to recognize it and you got to live consciously and think consciously. Don't just allow your mind to run you because then you'll never have control over your thoughts over your mind. You'll never have a say. Your mind will always run wild with whatever is going on and you'll have, you know, very difficult time having self-control because if you can't even have self-control within yourself of your thoughts, then it's going to be really hard to have self-control outside of your mind, right? Every Everything that happens, somebody cuts you off, you're going to have just a flip out. Someone gives you a bad look, you're going to just mouth off to them because you have no self-control. And that's a really scary place to be. And so for me, I know I can get there real quick. I can get hot real quick when someone's a bad driver. So I always have to live consciously, think consciously, and recognize when my thinking starts to get repetitive, like I start obsessing over this one thing that's happening. We have to recognize what our thoughts are saying, what our thoughts are making us feel. We have to recognize that. The second thing is to acknowledge the thoughts and emotions and accept any fears, insecurities, doubts you may have. So that was one thing I did in the car today. Instead of pushing everything away or down, I actually said, you know what, I'm going to acknowledge this. I acknowledge the emotions I'm feeling. When a thought has an emotion attached to it, you know that that's rooted somewhere down deep. That's a hook, right? That's something that it's a thought that you have and immediately you have this gut emotion. You know you got a hook in you. So I address that fear. Okay, so let's speak the truth to that because that's actually not true. This is the truth. This is what I know about myself. This is what I know about my life, my situation. So any insecurities, right? Insecurities, we talked a couple episodes back, are feeling unsafe, not feeling safe where you are with who you're with or what you're doing in your life. Those are all things that we absolutely have to address because it's root core issues, right? And doubt, self-doubt, which I also was struggling with today. I just had moments of feeling like, can I do this? And just having doubt with my ability and what I could do and moving forward and just even a doubt of what the future will look like, right? And if I'll ever have that. And so that's a moment to acknowledge and to affirm yourself. So that's my third point is to reaffirm. You have to reaffirm the truth inside of you. You have to ground yourself. And like I said, re-grounding yourself doesn't mean you're not grounded. A lot of times things come up and they cause us to drift, right? And we go down this rabbit trail of thoughts and emotions. But Regrounding yourself, reaffirming yourself is basically backtracking and bringing yourself back to the center. What do you know? What do you trust in? What do you believe in? What do you have faith for, hope for? All of those things come back in and bring yourself back to your center, back to peace, back to joy, knowing that you are whole within yourself. You don't need anything, you don't need anyone to make you whole, right? And to make you worthy of anything. You don't need anything in life to affirm your worthiness. You're already worthy to receive everything that is good for you in your life. So we really got to try to change our thinking to a problem-solving focus that is more deliberate and strategic, right? Which is the total difference between being ran by your thoughts and your emotions, which is unconsciously thinking, and become conscious thinking, which is problem solving, focusing on the positive, focusing on the truth, and being deliberate and on purpose with what you're thinking. So those are the four points of recognizing when your thinking starts to get repetitive or negative, acknowledging the thoughts and emotions and accept any fears, insecurities, doubts you may have, reaffirm the truth inside of you and ground yourself, and try to change your thinking from the unconscious, problematic, freaking out thinking to a problem-solving focus that is more deliberate and strategic. 
I hope that this helps you in this coming week and in your life. I hope this gives you the tools to overcome the negative self-reflection, the rumination that everyone can experience in their life when they're going through something really difficult. So thank you so much for joining me for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that you have a great week and that you overcome, that you're able to think consciously and to live a conscious, happy, fulfilled life. I love you guys and I'll see you on the I Am Soulish Instagram and Facebook to continue this conversation and I'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much. Love you all.